Hey everybody, Cat Synth TV, and today we are looking at Synthy Cat, a Max for Live instrument by Max for Cats. It takes inspiration from the legendary EMS Synthy. Now before we begin, we ask you to please support this channel so we may bring you more synth demos and cultural content regularly. Links to merch, Patreon, and Ko-Fi in the description below. Okay, let's dive right into it. Because the SynthiCat is a Max for Live instrument, it only runs on Ableton Live. We've created a track for it. Here's the device view. Press this button to bring up the main panel. Now as we mentioned at the top, SynthiCat takes its inspiration from the EMS Synthi A and presents the same features and a similar interface. Most prominent is the 16x16 matrix, where you insert pegs to create connections between sources listed vertically and destinations listed horizontally. We have the three oscillators, there is a noise source, we have a resonant filter and a ring modulator, we have an envelope shaper, there is a reverb unit, controls for external input, the XY controller represents the joystick on the original synthy and can be mapped to various parameters. There is the output section, which includes level and pan for each channel and a simple output filter. Last but not least, there is the SynthiCat logo. It has a cat playing the synthy pegboard. Isn't that adorable? Yes it is. Now if we start playing some notes on here, we don't hear anything. That's because we haven't made any connections on the matrix, so no signals are flowing through the instrument yet. Let's remedy that, shall we? I'm going to connect the sawtooth wave of oscillator 1 directly to the two outputs. Press this button in the corner of the oscillator to enable MIDI note control. Now the shape control allows us to change the shape of the wave. Let's turn down the level a little bit. We can use the sine wave of oscillator 1 at the same time by connecting it to the output channels. Now if you want to clear the matrix at any time, you can hit this clear button over here, which we are going to do now. So far, we have just played an oscillator through the output. It just keeps playing as long as it's connected. If we want to shape it into notes that start and stop, we can route the oscillator through the envelope. Now this is a little different from your standard ADSR envelope. It's what's called a trapezoid envelope. It has an attack ramp, attack level, a decay ramp, and a final level. This final level can be used to set an amplitude that will play continuously and automatically restart the envelope. You can also turn it off by turning it all the way to the right, which is what I usually do. There are also two separate outputs. The first is trapezoid, which is the actual envelope signal that you can use to control other parameters. Signal is the output from the envelope's built-in VCA, which takes an input signal. Let's go ahead and take the same oscillator 1 waveforms but this time route them into the envelope. This will send them to the VCA. Now this is a little bit confusing here, as the labels on the matrix are the opposite of the labels on the envelope section. Envelope signal is the envelope CV signal, while trapezoid is the output from the VCA. So we're going to route trapezoid to the two output channels. Let's increase the levels here and take the attack down a bit. Okay, let's look at oscillator 2. Instead of a sine wave, oscillator 2 adds a square or pulse wave in addition to the sawtooth. Let's connect the pulse to the envelope.
For this waveform, the shape control changes the duty cycle of the pulse. In the middle it is a square, and at either end it is a positive or negative pulse train. Now you may have noticed I adjusted the off control in the envelope to a high amplitude. This gives us something a bit like infinite sustain, which is useful for demo purposes. Let's bring in the sawtooth of oscillator 2, as well as both waveforms of oscillator 1. If you want to tune the oscillators, you can type in pitch values. Let's add an oscillator 3's pulse wave with a different duty cycle. Now we can combine the oscillators in different ways, like FM. Let's take the pulse wave of oscillator 2 and route the sine wave of oscillator 1 to oscillator 2's frequency control. And now let's look at the filter. Route oscillators 1 and 2 into the filter for a nice fat sound. The filter is a resonant low-pass filter with controls for cutoff frequency, resonance, which here is called response, and output level. Let's route the filter's output to the envelope, and then the envelope to the output channels. <laughs> Crank up the resonance. We do hear some staircasing in the cutoff frequency. Let's now bring in the noise generator. It has a control for the color or frequency content of the noise. Of course, we can mix the noise with the main oscillators. Let's clear once more again. The ring modulator multiplies two incoming signals and outputs the product. For example, we can take the sine wave of oscillator 1 and the pulse wave of oscillator 3 and route them to the ring modulator. Take the ring modulator's output and route it to the envelope.
And then we have the reverb section. Unlike the original synthy, which had a spring reverb, this reverb is a room model. It has controls for a wet-dry mix and an output level. Let's reroute the envelope VCA output to the reverb, and then from the reverb to the output channels. Okay, pretty cool. Now let's add back in the filter and the other oscillators, and connect them all in the matrix. Start by connecting the ring modulator to the filter, route the vertical of the XY control to the filter frequency, and route the horizontal to the frequency of oscillator 1. Now I really like this, so let's save it. The random button randomizes the connections in the matrix. It can be a fun way to explore different ideas, although it's very unpredictable. Yeah, most of the time it doesn't work out so well. Now the Synthicat can also accept input from external audio or other Ableton Live gadgets. Let's try this built-in wavetable instrument. <laughs> Pretty harmless. Now what we want to do is route it into the Synthicat. If we go to its device panel, we can select an input. Now let's reopen the main interface. We have these two controls for input level. Let's start by routing input directly to the output channels. <laughs> Okay, that works, but it's not very interesting. Let's take one of the input channels, route it to the ring modulator, and route oscillator 1 sign to the other ring modulator input, and the horizontal XY control to oscillator 1 frequency. Just for fun, let's route the ring mod into the reverb. Very nice. Now in addition to audio signals, we can also route external CV into the Synthicat. We have the CV Shaper from Ableton Live CV Tools package running. It allows us to create a shape for a repeating CV signal. We could mess with it a little bit. Set Synthicat's input to the CV Shaper. Route the input to the frequency of oscillator 2. Okay, that's cute. Now let's instead try it with the filter. Yeah. 
Okay, and there you have it. Let's listen to a few of the factory presets, which you can access by going to the SynthiCat package. We hope that you've enjoyed this look at the SynthiCat from Max for Cats. To find out more, please visit Sonic Bloom's website and check out the description below this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to CatSynth TV.